Pug P, we just support Lark P. And as OSPF is a service that we have to enable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable Lark P. And now I can go ahead and start configuring my port channel. There is no iter channel, it's just port channel, okay? So IP address. Then dot one dot fifty five dot two slash thirty on shot. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the interfaces that belongs to this port channel and actually unshut them and make them part of the channel group. So let's add some interfaces to the port channel. Interface E two slash one also plus another two interfaces. So there is no range keyword, but you can uh, achieve the same goal by using a comma. And then also what you can do is to add an iPhone like this. There you are. It's like a range, com a range command. So I'm shut. Then channel group one mod active. On the other side, I brought already the links up so that once I'm done here, I can do show port channel summary and all the ports are up. So the port, channels, the port channel is up, okay? So what I can do now, I can go ahead and configure the port channel with some OSPF configuration. So, okay, interface port channel one. I can add a description, okay, two, Nexus core, the other one. Then I can do IP or SPF method digest key one MD5 Cisco. I can do IP or SPF hello interval. I can set them to two IP or SPF that interval three times this value, so six. Then IP or SPF network point to point and now something very important you remember i didn't specify the network keyword when I, I created the ospf process so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna attach the ospf process to this interface by doing this ip router ospf one area zero this is how you do it no shut so now the, on the interface there is OSPF up and running. So what I'm gonna do also, I'm gonna repeat this configuration on, a, on another interface, actually the interface that is connected to the 6500 that we have on this setup. So description to cat 6500. And again, IP address. Then dot one dot believe is thirty dot one actually forty dot one twenty four then the OSPF configuration IP OSPF message digest key one MD five Cisco like I did for the other interface. OSPF hello to the OSPF dead interval six so IP OSPF network point to point now again IP OSPF no sorry IP router OSPF I am attaching the OSPF process to the interface So now, if I do show IP or SPF neighbors, yeah, here we are. I have two neighbors, one with the other Nexus 7000 that I have on my setup in the core and a neighbor to the 6500 that I have, uh, let's say, at the aggregation layer. 
So this is the OSPF configuration pretty much. So you see that there are some differences with respect to the uh, I classical iOS. However, we believe that this, this is the right way of doing it by having uh, the OSPF process attached to the interface without you need to remember the network and so on. It's an interface centric configuration and once you start using it and configure OSPF on your system, you will see that it's, it's much more easier and intuitive. What we can do now is it, we can see some other uh, output that relates to OSPF, something like show running config. If we want to see the configuration of the OSPF, that it's related to OSPF, we just do show running config so we don't have to do any include of the show running config and search for the uh, line lines within the running config that include OSPF. We just do show running config OSPF and we see all the configuration that pertains to OSPF. Another thing we can do is show IP OSPF interfaces interface and these are the informations that I have on the interface for what uh, concern OSPF and to show IP route OSPF and these are the routes that I have. So this is pretty much the OSPF configuration. Now we are ready, after we configure OSPF, to go to the next step where we will kill OSPF and we will show how the OSPF restarts and the 6500 on the other side does not even realize that the OSPF on the Nexus 7000 crashed and is back online. Step number 8. Stateful process restart. An XOS, as you know, is a modern operating system. NXOS continuously checks the health of each software module, making sure that if a process crashes or hangs, the right action is taken to allow service continuity and availability. NXOS has been designed around the concept of zero service disruption. All Layer 2 protocols, plus OSPF, support stateful process restart. During this step, we will see how the system recovers from an OSPF crash in a seamless way. You will see how the connected 6500 won't, won't even realize that the process crashed and restarted. So let's check the 6500 first. Here it is. As you can see, it has two neighbors. One is the uh, Nexus 7000 and the other one is another box that we have there, the titanium box. So what we will do now, we will go back to the Nexus 7000, we will kill OSPF, and let's see that. Actually, let's do one thing first. Let's bring the interface down so we see a bunch of messages on the 6500. So conf t, interface e2 slash 2, shut, no shut. So let's see what happened on the other side. Of course, the adjacency went down. Let's see the messages. As you can see, the uh, interface went down, and now the OSPF is back up. So if I do show the OSP, OSPF neighbor, they are or the, the uh, adjacency is back online. Now let's do this. Let's see what happens when we actually simulate a crash on the OSPF on the Nexus 7000. So let's now load the plugin that is in the boot flash. So what we will do, we will kill the process that was, I forgot, 6255. Now, as you can see, the process, the OSPF process has now a new ID. And if we go and check the 